Hello folks, all across Europe. This is going to be a great tasting. It's the first time I think we've ever done a tasting where our ambassadors across Europe are going to be joining us through the evening. Fantastic. In fact, you could say that at least for the next couple of hours, Scotland is back in Europe. Now, that's a strange thing to be able to say, isn't it? Now, I'm going to be joined by ambassadors from different countries in Europe, and we're going to be doing an SMWS tasting, and we're going to, I guess there are some new members out there, and we'll introduce you to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society whiskey, certainly as we go, okay? So I'm going to, first of all, introduce you to my ambassador colleagues who are going to be doing a tasting of a specific whiskey for your country tonight. First of all, we have Marcel from Germany. Hello, John. Hello, and Hi, Hello. How are you? Are you, are you? Are you at home? No, I'm not at home. I'm at a whiskey shop in Hanover, in my hometown. This is oh, very right. Okay. Okay. Very and good. Very good. I was look over my shoulder. Very, beautiful whiskeys here. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that's a very impressive collection for your bar at home. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, it's so next good. one is Bob. Bob from Penny Lux. Hi, John. How are you? Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing great. I saw I saw Bob very recently, folks, in the Glasgow venue. Uh, actually, just before it closed, Bob, I think it had only been open for a week. Yeah. And Bob and I were in there having a few drams, and a week later, it was closed because of lockdown. But we're back open again. So we'll get you there again soon, Bob. Next, we have Jutta from Austria. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, How there. are you? And this is How Anna. are you? Yes, we're fine. Thank you. And you? Good stuff. Good stuff. We're we all good here. And last but not least, we have Cyril from France. Hi, John. Hi, Cyril. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you from the country which orders more Scotch whiskey than any other country in the world? Sorry? <laughs> France orders more Scotch whiskey by volume than any other country in the world. <laughs> You didn't know that. Now let, me, let me tell you something, folks. We had a little chat the other day there leading up to this tasting. Now, I've lived in England for a few years, and I now speak with a very posh English accent. But Cyril asked me to go back <laughs> to my Glasgow accent again to make it more real and authentic. So I'm going to do my best. Okay. Yeah. Well, if, I if, think if, you <laughs> so if, if you can't understand me, just ask me to speak a little bit more slowly. And obviously, when it gets to your own country and you have questions or comments, please feel free to do it in your own language, and your own ambassador will be able to answer you. Now, all of our whiskies tonight are Scotch. We do whiskies from around the world now. But uh, all our whiskies tonight are Scotch. And something remarkable about Scotch is that famous whiskey writer, Michael Jackson, he said that Scotch is the only drink in the world that you can ask for anywhere in the world by reference to the country it comes from alone. Scotch. You don't even have to say the word whiskey. So all of my colleagues across Europe will be talking about a different whiskey and give you a bit of flavour and please join in. Sometimes we drink whiskey to appreciate it, to write our tasting notes, and other times we write it just for our own fun. So whichever way you're doing it tonight, please feel free to comment. Okay. So we're going to go to our first whiskey, and for that, we're going over to Marcel uh, in Hanover to let us know about his whiskey. Yeah, of course. Thank you, John. So the first whiskey of the evening, it's a very, very special yeah, way to this whiskey. And the first one is this little bottle here. 
Um, the name is Kaffee Pause in der Möbelfabrik. And the really special thing about this is it's uh, the only one with a German title. Um, and this has some background. The title was, um, yeah, was decided by our own members, which is very, very great. So thank you uh, at all the 15 members who was deciding for this whiskey. They had a very difficult job to be a whiskey decider. <laughs> and um, therefore they had three samples uh, to choose and this is the lucky winner. The whiskey is the 112.59, very, very cool distillery when you're asking for that, because this distillery can do anything. They have uh, different types of uh, stills, patent stills, pot stills, and they have an own, an own grain distillery, so they can do a single blend. This is very special for that. But yeah, it's uh, the also the, the only whiskey with two tasting notes, <laughs> with two <laughs> tasting note cards. And uh, therefore, and for all the German uh, guests in the show here. Um, I might to introduce to the German notes. So anyone is in favor to hear some German tonight. <laughs> so you can read the you can read the English one because this is much familiar to everyone. But um, reading out the German one. Die wunderschön leuchtende rötlich braune Farbe, die ist gutes erwartet und unsere Nase wurde nicht enttäuscht. Würzige, leicht süßliche Trockenfrüchte, kandierte Orangenscheiben mit dunkler Schokolade und einem Schuss Sherry machen diesen Whisky zu einem Erlebnis. Am Gaumen ein kräftiger Antritt, dann überraschend mild und mit einer großen Vielfalt an Aromen wie zum Beispiel Leder, Pfeifentabak, Vanille und Rosinen. Der lange Abgang erinnert an einen starken Espresso. Nach der Zugabe von ein paar Tropfen Wasser gesehen sich Noten von Karamell, Bratäpfeln und einem Trockenobstkomponent zu, während der Geschmack uns an einen in Kirchholz gereiften Balsamico erinnerte. Dieser Whisky wurde nach elf Jahren in einem Bourbon Hogshead für den Rest seiner Zeit, also zwei Jahre, two more years, um, in einem stark verkohlten, frischen Eichenfass gelagert. So we have a very specific combination of casks, which is very, very exciting. So let's have a look. Check for the first bottle of the evening. And let's feel. First thing which we uh, noting, uh, notice is uh, the wonderful color. Look at this. Look at this shiny golden thing. And let's have a deep nose. <laughs> so cheers. Slender. Slender. Yeah. Notes of everything. But my first impression was po uh, Polish, not the Polish people, because uh, Polish, I'm also a guitar guy and uh, I, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm familiar with use Polish on my guitar, the sweet aromatics, the sweetness in the, in the nose, something like dark roasty notes, petroleum and cold brew coffee. So a very, very good title uh, to say Kaffee Pause in der Möbelfabrik or in English. A uh, coffee break in a furniture factory, which is also good to know in uh, UK. It's fantastic, Marcel, isn't yeah. it? Because this one was extra matured in a charred New Oak hogshead. Yeah. It's just amazing what extra layers of flavor and experience that new oak freshly charred can give you. Well, hi, Nadja and Jens from Frankfurt. Good to mm -hmm. hear from you. So coffee notes, why Möbel, why Möbelfabrik? <laughs> because uh, furniture factory and the, the smelling of, of polish, of furniture, of wood. We have, uh, uh, um, when you go in deeper into the whiskey and later when you have dropped a little drops of water in it, you can, f uh, you can smell something like a lightly wood flavor in the nose. It makes me feel, Marcel, as if I'd like to enjoy a cigar with it, actually. Mm -hmm. Normally smoke cigars these days, but this one might tempt me. Well, I'm I'm not very a cigar man, but um, I can imagine this is beautiful to a to a long uh, to a aromatic cigar, something like a Cohiba or something like that, sure. because it's very strong and it's very uh, yeah. There's a very long taste resting in the mouth. Absolutely, it's very uh, very mouth filling, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I do. What I do about the other guys? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Marcel, what would you recommend eating with this drum? 
Eating with the stram, yeah, uh, good, <laughs> good thing. Um, I also have notes of uh, orange biscuits. So um, there are they are um, biscuits uh, with the name soft cake. Not everyone is liking them because they have these uh, gelé attic. Um, these, uh, this, yeah, like like orange glue in the mouth. <laughs> But uh, this is good uh, for this drum. Something like biscuits with a lightly orange flavor. It's just got so much in it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. One, of the, one of the interesting things about when we have extra mature the whiskey, and we're going to come to one of those later on too, but it's trying to identify the flavors from the original cask and the uh, extra mature cask, that all just adds another layer of kind of interest. And there's definitely been more, a lot more added here by the charred oak. Yeah, I know. It's it's um, it's ex definitely an extra layer. The, the can, mm -hmm. uh, if you if you extra mature cask, can uh, all sorts of things can happen. You can mask yeah. flavor, the flavors can be enhanced. Yeah. And this one yeah. has an extra layer to it. Yes. There are good. Uh, there are good comments from the from the uh, first, from the visitors of us. Um, very lovely, lovely sweet and and spicy, spicy notes. Uh, I think this is a new cask, uh, the virgin cask. Yeah, the spiciness in the in the whiskey. So I give uh, something of water to it. Don't good know how you are with what. <laughs> I usually wait for my co-host to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, a fruit cake would match very, very well to this drum. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Because there are loads of no, uh, of um, tasting notes like um, orange, like in German it's uh, ah, yeah, peach, Pfirsich. Pfirsich. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, um, on the what what is left is something like uh, good notes of a very good old fashioned. Hmm. Of, of what? Sorry. Old old fashioned, you know, old fashioned oh, yeah. to drink. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. When you have uh, something like the orange zest, which is uh, which is left mm -hmm. on the cocktail, very very good notes. Yes, I had this also in the nose and in the mouth. An orange peel, <laughs> orange, some prunes maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's fruit. It's fruity, and at the same time, yeah. there's this deep, almost like smoky, woody, yeah. tobacco-like ground layer, which 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 I really like. It's really good. This one. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. We can't buy it in tobacco. Uh, I, I, I agree. <laughs> so I only can repeat to everyone these fifteen guys who has chose or have has chosen these uh, this whiskey instead of the other two. Very great job. Yeah, absolutely. I do agree. I don't know what the other whiskies were, were, were like, but this one is this one is really really good. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's got certainly a lot of, kind of roasted flavors. You know, I quite liked your description initially, Marcel, about the polish. I think it's mm -hmm. quite a bit of that in it. You know, as, as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, you read the tasting note in German. I, I think it's obviously a direct translation. But the most incredible thing, really, is that I know the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Uh, the, the people around the table on the tasting panel will often be people from Scotland or England rather than abroad. So the tasting notes can often be come from the memory of people who live in these islands. And it's always very interesting to see what other people from other countries think, you know. And I think that uh, it's a wonderful thing that we're, we're, th we're gradually thinking of trying to get our members from across the globe to actually contribute their own tasting notes, just like we have done here, because that gives an extra dimension to it, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, fully agree if you think about, think about it, there's a, we, we might say a whiskey is fruity. There's about 2,000 fruits in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> when we say fruity, <laughs> when we say fruity in Scotland, it might be something rather different in Shanghai, you know? Mm. <laughs> Some music. <laughs> I found in in this whiskey also a fruit. Uh, it's called in in German uh, Ringlotten, <laughs> but I don't okay. know it in English. It's, okay, yeah, yeah. It's like a small plum, a cream plum, and it's a sweet fruit and very delicious. 
and I okay. have to okay. this with you. Good, good. Well, see, we wouldn't have got that. I wouldn't have got that. So, <laughs> our tasting panel. Well, the, 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 our tasting panel now has has got some uh, experience doing uh, tastings online because they couldn't get together uh, during the lockdown. So that might be a good incentive to uh, to make it somewhat broader. I would say. I would say. That's a great, great point, Bob. I uh, I don't think I think our lessons that we've learned in this last six or seven months probably will mean that we'll do more and more uh, online tastings in the future because they have worked so well. They brought people together where normally we couldn't do it. I mean, we we have had at our gatherings uh, in the last couple of years, in September last year and the year before, we've did online tastings to members all over. But we've never had something like this before. we ambassadors from other countries are coming and joining us with whiskeys bottled for their country. So it's another another experience entirely. It's very, very good. But before this time, we have um, not such beautiful things than this here. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 it's just an added thing, Marcel. We've all got the T-shirts. We've all got the jackets. I've got yeah. the watch. I've got the watch. I've got a pin. Yeah. <laughs> you have got the watch. <laughs> yes, the watch. Click, click. And now we have this one. Yeah, we all know your watch, now, John. And now we even have, now we have face masks. Yeah. So please send John a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got one. Oh, so you've got one. Okay. Well, thank, you, thank you very much, Marcel. Well, that was a, that was a very, very good whiskey and a very well, well, well described tasting. Thank you. Juicy uh, just, oak and vanilla. <laughs> juicy oak and vanilla, yes. I was just uh, watching there. And it just shows you what the society can do. I was in a, I was in a, a festival in Frankfurt a couple of years ago, and I met a couple of people there, Nadja and Jens, just for the very first time. And now we are the best of friends. And I saw Nadja and Jens come, come on there commenting about the whiskey. So good to see you again, Nadja and Jens, even though it's online. Now, the next whiskey. Uh, we're going to go to Benelux. Bob, can I bring Bob in to introduce his whiskey? Yes, of course. Of course you can. Thank you very much, John. Um, so welcome here from uh, from the Benelux. Actually, I'm in the Netherlands, in a little town called Lent near Nijmegen, which is actually near the German border to make things really complicated. <laughs> so, uh, Marcel, I did really understand your uh, your tasting notes. I couldn't have written them, but I, I can understand them, uh, which is which is <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> so this is really a, really a great uh, great evening to be honest. Uh, I love this all, us all of us being together and uh, a couple of our members being together with us uh, online. So if you've got any questions for us or any comments on the on the next whiskey we are going to taste, uh, uh, please bring it on. Um, Actually, a couple of months ago, when we were asked to, uh, or if it was okay to to bring out an, a Benelux bottling, you should have seen me. I was jumping around this this little <laughs> room here <laughs> from from total and utter joy. Um, only my next question was, uh, okay, may we may we select our own bottle as well? Uh, well, the answer was no. <laughs> okay, so which bottle are we going to get then? Well, it's going to be Distillery 93. And then I was jumping all over this room again. <laughs> <laughs> because um, Distill Distillery 93 is actually, um, it's of the same owners as, as the other one, the, the, the one we had before. And um, it's also a very versatile distillery. There's there's lots and lots and lots of different products coming from that distillery. And it's very, very exciting. I was there uh, about three years ago. And it's, uh, it's actually in Campbelltown. And... Um, if you, if you look up Campbelltown on, on uh, things like Wikipedia, you get you get this broad history of, of Campbelltown being a, a, a state-founded city. And um, uh, it, it once was uh, a, a city with lots and lots of distilleries. The thing I most remember of Campbelltown, to be honest, is, is two things, actually. There's, there's a dear friend of mine uh, living there. Um, he, uh, uh, he started his own whiskey company by now. And um, another thing I remember from uh, being in Campbelltown is um, uh, haggis with uh, uh, these tortilla chips. You know, uh, these, these uh, um, haggis and cheese and, and tortilla chips are all over it. Uh, great, great, great stuff. But 
Well, okay. that, that's my memory for Camel Town. Let's go to the whiskey because I'm probably boring you with uh, all kinds of. No, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess. Haggis and tortilla chips, Bob. That's got me very intrigued. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in a in a pub called the Harbour Inn, which is in a hotel yes. there somewhere. Yeah. 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 It was it, it was a marvelous dish, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but <laughs> it was great. So uh, actually, um, again, Distillery Ninety Three is cast number one four one. The title is uh, majestically funky. Um, I was told to do this if you want to see it. So this is the bottle, and um, in your tasting pack, it should be number two. But from experience, I know it might be somewhere else in the in the in the lineup in your in your box. Um, it's a distillery ninety three. It's uh, from an ex bourbon barrel, and the, the beautiful thing, cool thing again about distillery ninety three is that it is uh, it's so versatile. You can get peaty whiskies, you can get very fruity whiskies, you can get uh, very Oily and coastal whiskies. Well, ta -da, that's what we have today. Um, if you put it in, in your glass and, and nose it, for for me, what what immediately immediately hits me is is uh, sweetness, fruit, fruitiness. Um, I'm I'm not too sure about what fruits uh, I smell. It's it's more like, <laughs> like uh, mixed fruits. It's it's more like it's, it's it's seriously. It's more like like a jelly or something. It's um, it's a mismatch of, of stuff, and just behind there, there's there's this this um, base layer of, of perhaps things like like uh, so some some mushiness, some mushroom stuff, uh, perhaps some straw, and there's also this 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 slight hint of um, what I always. Uh, smell when I when I walked walk down a beach um, and I can't really find it to be honest, but it, it remembers me of walking down a sandy beach. This one, licorice is from for something that, that really occurs to me. And then on the palate, what 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 really hits me is two things. It's really mouth coating, so there's there's lots and lots of um, oiliness in there, and on top of that, um, it is salty. It is it's it has got some some faint smokiness, saltiness in there, which is it's not really really potent, but it is absolutely there. And um, well, I'm not usually the judge of this, these sort of things, but uh, uh, oily and coastal, yeah, absolutely. This this, <laughs> this whiskey is oily and coastal for me. Yes, Bob. There, there are some there are some flavour profiles which kind of are on the edge, from one to the other. But this one is very definitely in that oily and coastal definition, isn't it? Yeah. And I, if, if, I, I'm not going to read read, it, read the tasting notes, but I've I've got them in front of me here. Um, and there's also things like uh, diesel oil in there and uh, sardines and olive. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, beautiful thing about, about drinking whiskey is, and especially uh, uh, smelling the aromas is that everybody has their own reference um, references. So uh, what, what I pick up are, are not necessarily the things you should be picking up, but uh, it is it is really, uh, bottom line, it's, it's really a nice trend, this one. I'm, I'm really curious what you think about it. I think what you said there, though, Bob, is very important in that, um, that there is no right or wrong. There's no to a, to a tasting note because different people will get very different things. As, mm. And partially, partially that reason, it's not just because of people's factory systems being very individual, but certainly some whiskies in your mind, in your brain, will remind you of different things in your life. And that could be a very, very painful thing. So it's always interesting to hear what people say. And some people... Don't have, don't have confidence in expressing themselves in terms of the tasting in case they get it wrong. And I keep on saying there's no, you can't get it wrong. It's a very personal thing. That's uh, that's what the fun is all about. Yeah, that's to have fun. That is <laughs> that's absolutely the most important thing for me. Right. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no other reason to drink whiskey, to be honest. <laughs> yes. unless, unless you should be a professional taster and, and uh, be in a tasting panel or something like that. But um, yeah, there's no there's no other excuse for drinking than to have fun. 
Yeah, no, no, yeah. Well, it feels like uh, the Grand Prix, but uh, ten. Oh, yeah, that's good like that. <laughs> Stay like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marshall. <laughs> ah, I think we, yeah, I think we sort of lost Germany here. Oh. <laughs> Okay. I just wrote there. I just saw a note there from Peter Reichwald. Good to see you, Peter. Been a while. We'll get together in the London venue sometime. Cheers. Oh yes, I, yeah. We have we've got a date as well, uh, John. I, I saw you last time. I saw you. With, it was in uh, in Bath Street. A new new venue in Van die Rose Gele Schuimblokken. So now this is a Dutch tasting note, which you, none of you will understand. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> Maybe Hannah understands a little bit. <laughs> sure enough. Yeah. But last time I saw you was in Bath Street, a new, new venue in, uh, in Glasgow. And yeah. uh, uh, wow, was I impressed. This is, this is, um, uh, uh, sorry, the, 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 the vaults is absolutely, absolutely the go to venue for the, for the, for the, for the society, of course. But uh, we've got another one. Um, um, all of them are really good, to be honest. But uh, Bath Street. It, it sort of combines all the good things of all the other venues and uh, combined with a brilliant selection of whiskies. Um, I, I hope the lockdown really uh, goes away fast because... When I'm, when I'm, I was very excited about it, Bob, as you know, because I'm from Glasgow. So I've been a member for a long time and we had two venues in Edinburgh and none in Glasgow. So I was very pleased about that. Yeah, I can imagine. That it, I, would, I would really like to have something like that on my doorstep. Would be, yeah, would, be yeah. quite, would be quite bad for me as well, but. <laughs> so what do you think about this? Does, does, has anyone put any water in it already? Mm, yeah. I tried to, uh, this sometime before this day, no, but um, this is, um, you have a very, very good uh, fruit explosion when you, uh, when you uh, put water in it. Okay. Lots of yellow fruits, uh, something like mango, pineapple, maracuya, passion yep. fruit. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. My friends from uh, Frankfurt have just said pineapple as well, yeah. Marcel. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. And I must, I'm, and I must really compliment on uh, Gemma, uh, who's a, uh, one of our members here, and uh, she, she just commented, roze, gele schuimblokken. Absolute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> oh, okay, well. <laughs> I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring i'll bring i'll bring some for you uh, next time <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you bob that was uh, that was great whiskey was good and your tasting notes were fantastic yeah and now it's over to me mm -hmm. I've to tell you about folks this one is very special for a couple of reasons this one actually two bourbon barrels both into uh, an egg sherry butt, you know, and people say, but wait a minute, that's new, isn't it? You haven't done that before. Is that still single cask? Well, it's not single cask, it's single malt, but we've actually been doing similar things since way back in the beginning of the 90s. Ever since the society started, we've looked to innovate, to provide new flavours and new experiences, and this is just another version of that. Those existing members who've been around for a few years will know we've did blended malts, we've even did non-scotch, we've even did other single cast spirits. And this is just another example of how try hard to work with our innovation and imagination to bring new flavours to our members. Now this is from a Speyside distillery. As I said, two bourbon barrels, then put together into a, a sherry cask. It's one of those distilleries in Speyside which is regarded as a top dressing malt for blends. Many blenders use it. It's used in Royal Salute blended whiskey. It's used in Chivas Regal 18. So it tends to be used in some of the very, very expensive and prestigious uh, blended whiskies. Now, uh, there's a couple of things about uh, this whiskey too about the distillery. Um, it was the distill. Some of you who know about Japanese whiskey will know the name Masataka Takitsuru. 
Mass Attack, Attack at Suru, came to Glasgow in 1919 after the First World War to study chemistry. He wanted to go back to Japan and build a distillery. After he took his chemistry degree, met a young girl from a place called Kirkintilach, where I used to live, and he then went to, who he married and took back to Japan, but before he did that, he went to work in this distillery. And they say that he learned so much, he was so impressed, they went back to Japan and opened Sata Nika and opened Yoichi, that Yoichi was modelled on this distillery back in Scotland. He was so keen to try and replicate what he learned in Scotland. But I can tell you, last year I was in Yoichi distillery with SMWS Japan, and it's not like this distillery at all. But that may have been the case a way back then. So this distillery, it was interesting actually, this distillery actually, uh, there used to be a manager there called Hamish Proctor. Hamish Proctor. And Hamish was a keen salmon fisherman in the spay. And he said he wanted to make sure that the water, which was left the distillery to go back into the river was very cool because he didn't want the salmon poached before he caught it. <laughs> so so this is a this is a, a very interesting whiskey because what you're trying to find is the, the notes of the new make spirit, the notes of the bourbon and then the notes of the sherry. Now the, the new make spirit for this one is very Sweet and fruity, and fruity and robust, yes. So then it's in the bourbon cast, and then it goes to the sherry cast. Now, what uh, it's deep, rich, and dried fruits. So the kind of things which you would expect to get from deep, rich, and dried fruits are things like rum truffles and treacle toffee and sherry trifle. That's the kind of general direction a deep, rich, and dried fruits will actually go in. And there is no doubt in my mind, in my palate, in my nose, that this has got roasted flavours all through it. Burnt notes, burnt toffee. It's got a little bit of Christmas cake in it. You know, the, the, the raisins and the baked cinnamon. And I can't believe I've mentioned Christmas and it's only the 17th of September. I apologise for in Scotland, we don't normally like to mention Christmas until at least after St. Andrew's Day on the 30th of November, okay? But this is, this is wonderful, and it belies its strength because it's very smooth and mouth-filling, and you don't get so much of the dryness that sometimes a sherry cast brings until the very, very end, you get a little bit of it. So let's have a nose. Maybe some dates and prunes in there. Very mouth coating, very chewy. And I think there's definitely a little bit of kind of bourbon type toffee, butterscotch flavors lurking underneath that very rich, burnt, cooked red fruit that the sherry cask has managed to bring along. Tell me if you agree. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> this, this, this is one of those rams. Um, I actually had this in a tasting uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's very pri this sort of dram makes me uh, feel very privileged because I can bring this stuff, stuff to people and have them taste it. Uh, <laughs> wow. This is so no, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely right, Bob. I, I've had a couple of tastings now as well, and the, every one of the two tastings I've done it with before, I've really, really thought it was fantastic. It's 59.8%, and you would think that, well, I don't want to put some water in this in case I spoil it, but I always say that you never know you might be missing unless you try a little bit of water. In this one, 
the water slightly lightens it, and you get more of a little bit of citrus coming through below the deep red fruit flavours. A bit of bourbon spice to match the sherry spice, and I think it even actually gives more spice at the back of the throat than it does when it's neat. By the way, unfortunately, folks, I can tell you this one sold out already. Thankfully, I ordered a bottle, but I'm in a bit of a panic because I ordered it two weeks ago and it's not arrived yet, and I frantically emailed the society in Edinburgh yesterday to say, what's going wrong? So hopefully that will get sorted. <laughs> no problem, I've got one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Well, anyway. laughs> You're a lucky man. <laughs> this has certainly been one of my favourite whiskies of the last couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had it in all days since the last weeks, and all members in Austria were very yeah. impressed of this of this trend. Mm. Alison is saying very chocolatey, and I think Alison, I don't know whether that came out for you when you added water, but I understand what you mean if that's, if that's what you say, yeah. So John, uh, do I understand yeah. correctly that for the the uh, the US market they did about the same bottling? Yes, uh, bourbon cask. Did you have you did you have a taste of that one as well? No, I haven't, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I haven't, unfortunately. I tell you what, if I get a chance, I'll fly over to America to taste it. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think yeah. yeah, I think you're right, Bob. It's a sister cask, uh, and I think that went to the American market. The same way some of these ones tonight have gone to your markets, you know. But yeah, but it would be very interesting to know what that, what that what that would have done. But um, it's yeah. Yeah. so 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 nice. Absolutely. I've had two significant aromas in this whiskey. The, uh, the first one, I don't know if uh, everyone knows that. Um, in German, it's Feuerzangbole. I don't know if you know that, John. <laughs> in English, it's Feiertongs Punch. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't, yeah. The only words I know in German, Marcel, is Bayern Munich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, moment, the moment when you are burning the sugar heads to make yes. this Feiertongs okay. Punch. Yeah. This is exactly the same when you when you smell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. those roasted burnt flavors come piling through. I think right through that whiskey and only lightens up. And you add a little bit of water. I think it's fantastic. Fantastic. When, when any we, any other comments, folks? <laughs> we we feel free. In, in Vienna, we were asked if it's a rum. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you know, Jutta, sometimes, particularly with very aged spirit, sometimes they can start to almost taste like each other, mm -hmm. the rum and brandy and whiskey, yeah. you know. You can actually get, because of the wood effect, you can actually start to get very, mm -hmm. very strong similarities. But in this, um, in this flavor profile, a rum flavor often comes through. Yeah. It was also my first impression in, in the smell, in the nose rum. Yeah, yeah. Very, I, would I, would love, I would love for someone who thinks they don't like whiskey to come along and taste yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> come to the good side. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it would be the epiphany of a lifetime. Oh, yeah. It's also, it's also a whiskey which makes me very happy that we changed uh, bottle labels, actually. Uh, we went back to we went back went back to the little table uh, uh, on the bottom of the label, which uh, states the different sorts of uh, sorry different casks uh, the whiskey. Oh has yes, been. yes, yes, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I do love the openness and uh, and. Um, oh, that's fantastic. I think I think your members love that because Bob, I think it's um when you're trying to understand flavor, mm -hmm. then when you see what contributed to that flavor, it can help educate. Yes, thank you, Marcel. That's great. It can help you educate your palate. And your nose to understand what flavors come from different types of wood. And I'm often I'm always fond of saying that people who know society whiskey, you can never know it all, but who experience society whiskey can go to a single malt, which is a mix of casks, maybe use different wood used, and actually get the different flavors coming from the different woods that are used in the single malt. So it's a fantastic. And I always say that you should start the you should start your whiskey journey with the society, <laughs> not 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 graduate to it later. Well, 
Great one. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Lovely drum. Yeah. Okay. Also, thank you. Also, something like flame bananas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. I sit myself. The longer you sit, nosing and tasting, and sipping the whiskey, more and more will come to you. That's why people think that. Look at these tasting notes. How did that all come about? Well, obviously, one person won't get everything, but one person will get more and more and more the more they try to appreciate the whiskey and understand what they're experiencing. It's a, it's fantastic, fantastic. That's what I love about the society whiskey. You know. And also, also people should take their time. Um, sit down, relax, and let the people. Oh, sorry, let the whiskey uh, uh, evolve into what. Absolutely. It, yeah. And Bob, sometimes, sometimes what I do is I pour two glasses of the same whiskey, and just push one away. And whilst I'm drinking the first one, you can get to the second one and find that there's new flavors have arisen because of the act. The, you know, the action of the oxygen, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Mm. Oh, my, 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 wife, my, wife said, my wife said, though, please stop it too. Don't pour six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. Uh, thank you for that. We are now going to go to Cyril, Cyril in France. Yes. Hi, John. Hi, Cyril. Now, I said earlier that... Uh, France is actually the biggest export market by volume for scotch in the world. And I trace that You're right. I trace that back hundreds of years to what in Scotland we call the old alliance <laughs> and what you in France called Vieja Alliance. I don't know I don't know whether you get taught about the Vieja <laughs> Alliance in France, but we get taught about the old alliance in Scotland. And also I'm also very, very proud to remind you, as I said the other day there, a famous French man <laughs> called Voltaire, back in the 18th century, said we look to Scotland mm. for all of our ideas on civilization. <laughs> Bob and Bob chipped in. Yes. Was that where France went wrong? <laughs> 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 so I'll hand over. I'll hand over to you. So carry on. Yeah, uh, I will. Uh, sorry for my connection. I think that there's a little bit of lag. Uh, but anyway, um, I remember last year uh, 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 the, the 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 French bottling was joie de vivre. I don't know if you remember. There was uh, Painstain represented the French flag. Uh, and it was a very, very nice, and we were very proud of this uh, of this bottling. But but this year, this year we have that. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the distillery ten, and the bottle is ten point one hundred and ninety five. Uh, Shiver me tenders. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that there are a lot of lovers of uh, the distillery. So as you can as you can as you can see, it's, um, it's a pitted one, the pitted one, the intermediate level green color at the society. Uh, it's coming from Isla, uh, and it has his own personality, uh, and we'll see we, we'll see that uh, later. It's only uh, a six years old, but really it's a huge one, huge one. It reached uh, fifty. Uh, 59.8 degrees and uh, it matured uh, for four years in bourbon oxide and then two more years in heavily toasted uh, medium charred oxide. Uh, and then John, I, I, I ask you please excuse my accent, oh, but right. if I say Sosha, is it okay? Sorry, Cyril. No, if if I say Stosha, is it okay with the accent? Stosha. Stosha. The it, it's a it's a it's a it's a lock uh, near 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 Bunaven, I think. Stoch. Stokia. Oh no! Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I, will, I will just try to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> okay. Okay. You go, you go. Uh, 
And it's, probably, it's, it's, no, it's probably me. It's probably me. May, maybe my accent is it's not quite well. <laughs> anyway, let's try it. Your English is much better than my French. Thank <laughs> 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 you. So, so before testing it, let's talk about the color because the color and very is very important on that one because. As I said, you know, is uh, 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 it's a heavily toasted medium charred oxide, and we know that it's very uh, it has a lot of influence on the color, and that one is very uh, it's very uh, brilliant, in fact. Uh, so the nose, yeah, we we we, we immediately smell the smoky side uh, of this whiskey, like toasted bacon. And um, some of you, some of you may find a, a smell of hot tires. Uh, it's a well-known marker on PT whiskey, hot tires, of course. And you know, I, I saw on that card, uh, on that card that uh, uh, you have frazzles. That's right. And we don't have frazzles here in France, but we have like quite the same. Um, it's it's potato chips, in fact, with bacon, yeah. and it feels exactly the same. Yeah, sure. And the mouse, the mouse is is exactly that, I think. But I'm sure that everybody will find other aromas. Sure. It's good you mentioned color there, Cyril, because because uh, our, our whiskey is all natural color with nothing added. It can often no, tell you quite, can often tell you quite a lot about what cask it may have come from, and you were saying this this has been transferred into a heavy toast medium char cask, so it's got a little more darkness to it, and you might have got straight from the bourbon, you know. So 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 even before you've had a sniff or a sip, you can get some pleasure just from looking at the colour and the legs, you know. Mm. Yes. It's exactly that. The mouse, have you tasted it once? It's very powerful. Powerful. Again, the pit is present, of course. But uh, it's a lot of vanilla inside, I think. Yeah. Mm. The vanilla and sweetness. It's uh, almost like, um, uh, uh, like smoked eel on... Uh, on the sushi with uh, uh, with with this uh, um, dark uh, dark sauce on it. Yes, something like that, something like that. And it turned it turned also to um, uh, medicinal uh, aromas and um, and comfort for sure. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's as having a, right. a spoon of ash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. But my, my, my last notes for the uh, for the final notes when you um, when you um, feel the whiskey here, it's it's really word for word vanilla on seafood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, vanilla on seafood. Yeah, yeah. you're right. What's interesting? You can pair it with, with seafood, of course. Yeah. Oh, what's interesting about that vanilla flavor is that that is coming from the from the initial cask, the bourbon cask, uh -huh. mm -hmm. because what because on a heavy toasted barrel you, you tend to reduce the vanillins on heavy toast, increase them on light toast, but reduce them on on heavy toast. So those vanillins were already there from the initial bourbon cask, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, probably, absolutely. Yeah, and then we can try. We can try with a little bit of water too. I get something. In the whiskey for just six years old, eh? Hmm. I get something six years old, yeah. different, which is uh, pumpkin seed oil. Pumpkin oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, yeah. Wow. Pumpkin seed oil, yeah. You're right. You're right. Spot on. Yeah. Great, great note. Yeah, thanks. Try, try to say it in German. 
Kürbiskernöl. Hm, Kürbiskernöl. <lacht> The funny thing is, I have trouble, uh, I have trouble with uh, Scottish accent, so <laughs> with the German one. <laughs> little bit, do, little do, bit. We, do we have understand our our Austrian accent? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I understand you better than John. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> long, time be, long time before this tasting, I tried the whiskeys in the wrong or in the right order, like the uh, like they are ordered in the in the tasting set, and um, there the two PD ones are on position two and three. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this, this was this was the second one, and it, oh. this whiskey blows everything out which you know about peat. This is very <laughs> a very peaty one for these yes. six years. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried. I had, I had a tasting a couple of weeks ago, uh, Marcel, and I tried doing a PT one with two PT ones like this, and I tried PT number two and PT number five, mm -hmm. uh, so so that we kind of split them up, you know, and mm -hmm. and and it worked. Some people prefer them all to come together at the end, and some people like to kind of, of course. Flavors as they go through, and I, I know some um, Scandinavia often they like to start with the PT whiskies. Would you believe? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so it just depends what people people like. This is this is fantastic. This is one of my favourite distilleries. I hope uh, I hope David Brody from this distillery is looking in because good good friend, big guy. Cheers on David and thanks for the warehouse tasting. <laughs> Good singer for Corona time. Oh. Mm. See, some people uh, say here. Yeah. Then we have the, the final. The final is quite long. Finished. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, really yeah, I, was just, I was just saying that like, the final is quite long. We're six years old. Mm. And some, not... some people are asking, are these available in the online shop? Oh, can you hear me now? The plan is that they're going to be on they're going to be online sale for the people who bought the packs, the people who are on this tasting in about six or seven minutes. And then and then it'll be available to the other members next Monday. Mm -hmm. So if you go onto the site in oh. five or ten minutes. You should be able to, but don't, don't worry about it. There's enough to keep for the people who bought the packs. So don't leave us. Don't leave All right. us. <laughs> All right. it's, time, it's time to get some new friends. friends. You'll, be able, you'll be able to get one in a little while because it's going to be limited, limited to the people who bought the pack in the first instance. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. Right. yeah. And uh, yeah. They're, limited, they're limited to your country. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Can you, so it's time to. Can you, can you, can you hear me again? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, right. I so difficult what? for me there. What was your last? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Just repeat. <laughs> it's difficult so to it's hear you. you. I have trouble okay. with the connection. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can <laughs> hear you, Stuart. Just, just, just repeat. Hello there. Yeah. I think <laughs> Cyril is frozen. Just his, yeah. uh, just his picture. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, my uh, Cyril is coming back. We seem to have lost Cyril, mm -hmm. so let's move on to our final whiskey, which will uh, appeal to many people, I am sure. And we're going over to Jutta and Hannah. Please introduce your whiskey. Thank you. Yes. So hello from Austria again. Uh, I'm Jutta and this is Hannah, my daughter. And we are very proud to present the, the first market exclusive bottle. On, and why do we have this bottle? Because we are celebrating our 10th anniversary with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. And oh, okay, it's okay, very okay. special and we really very proud and happy that, that we got the 53 so we have the 53.331 yeah Hamster also, supernova 
We yeah, think the absolutely. 53 is a very suitable bottle for Austria because as probably all of the countries, we have quite a few 53 fans here in Austria. So it's perfect. Good. Good. Yeah, Good. perfect. We have a lot of smoke heads in Austria, and so oh. the, the 53 <laughs> is perfect for us a few. And, and we are big thank you to you and who chose yeah. the, the bottle. And the 53.48 was the uh, first bottle sold in Austria with the name Barbecue in the Autowerkstatt. <laughs> barbecue <laughs> in the garage. And this was, I think, in 2002. And um, the society um, was ran, ran um, from Switzerland in the, at this time until 2010 and we had about 20 53s in that time and until now it's there are much more of of 53 sure. and yeah it's it's very special for us and but now back to our 53 as we all um know there are nine active distilleries on isla and this still distillery is looking over the sound of isla uh, we think it's quite impressive, this example. And it's also interesting how the distilling is process is um, with slower fermentation and tall stills or the line arms all has an impact on the flavor yeah. of the spirit and of the new made spirit, of course. It's quite impressive. And it's, and it's fascinating, Jutta, as you say, it gets exactly the same peated level of malt in as mm. lager in, and yet they are both so different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. as you just said. Mm. Mm. So, and on the nose, I think it has the, the, the nose of a, of a barbecue at, or a peach bonfire. And we, I can, we, we don't have peaches yeah. here. Yeah, no. Austria, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> we only have lakes. Of course, yes, yes. But it smells like a beach in Scotland. Mm. Well, con consider yourselves, yourselves invited in the Netherlands then. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> I have also notes of, of, of grass or seaweed in the nose yeah. and also the salt the salt beach there and it's it's absolutely amazing an amazing drum yeah it's oh. it's smoky but i'm not in the game just for that yeah. mm. it's smoky but it's still sweet in the background yeah well, it yeah. has a very nice balance yeah yeah absolutely. i love yeah, absolutely. the sweetness yeah. of the beat in the nose that's a cool. That's a cool mix. I don't know if everyone is familiar with Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, Ben and Jerry's. So uh, imagine, imagine a smoke, a smoky. Oh God, one, two, zero for the words. Sorry for that. <laughs> imagine a smoky cookie dove. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So some smoky cookie dough. Effects. Yeah. 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 So that's, a, that's, 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 that's a really nice one. Fascinating, but yeah. <laughs> yeah the name of this bottling is Hamster Supernova. <laughs> I don't know why, but maybe. Chuta, it's just one of those amazing things. You have a chairman of a tasting panel. Yeah. And everybody, here's everybody's opinions of what they think they are tasting. And his job is to take all those notes away and come up with a headline. Yeah. And Sometimes they just let their imagination run a little bit wild. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, I think sometimes the name comes after they've had a few whiskeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure about it's this. But it's supposed to be fun. So yeah, yeah. In in Austria, I'm I'm always uh, translating the tasting notes for the members, and it's very yeah. much appreciated. And sometimes I was, who? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always oh, Doctor Google gives me an answer. <laughs> but Absolutely. it's quite interesting for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of UK humor with in the title. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, yeah, just, yeah. I'm just very grateful there's no visual for this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have had some very strange titles in our history. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The funny Good thing job. is, um, when she translates the whiskeys, I study English. And she asks me, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I, at the beginning, in 2010, I need one and a half hour for a few lines. One and a half hour. At the moment, I'm very quick and everything is fine. But at the beginning, it needs very much time. Oh. Well, I, I have to say, Hannah, your English sounds fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I've just seen uh, Ma Max the Wolf has been on here. Hiya, Max. Good to see you with us. Max, we are Make sure it's okay. yeah, yeah. Best drama of the evening. Many people yeah. always say the last PT. I will say hello to Rai Master. The, uh, this are uh, members of, of Austria from Vienna. It's Richard and Jutta. Cheers, oh. Richard and Jutta. Oh, wait a minute, Weirledge. It wasn't Hamster Supernova and Oasis B side. <laughs> but I have no idea. Very, very possible. Very possible. Again, I'm just grateful there's no visual. <laughs> <laughs> Hamster Supernova. <laughs> we've missed the details. It's from an refill X bourbon hog set, 11 years and 58.5 ABV. So it's perfect drum, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Big in the mouth with the smoke. Certainly. It's a very smoky one, mm -hmm. yes. Very much yes. freeze in it. Yeah. Five, when, when three, we, three, three, one. <laughs> <laughs> when we tasted mm -hmm. this whiskey first, we had some imagines and and one was um a bratwürstel, <laughs> a bratwürstel <laughs> on a barbecue. It's a sa sausage on a barbecue. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. yes. All right, that's a nice pairing. <laughs> I'm, yeah. It's time for the best uh, for the best society titles for whiskies. Uh, something like Kermit's Karle Knackwurst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also now, some good suggestions uh, of the visitors. <laughs> so post yeah. in. <laughs> Please. Well, we have all the chance to give a, a bottling a, a title next year, for next year. And the ballot was out today, and I hope many members will join the ballot. Now, now folks, people were asking before about buying online. All of the members who purchased a pack have been sent an email for with a link to that mm -hmm. bottle, okay? So that will be your personal link to that. And other members uh, will be emailed the link on Monday at 2 p.m. Okay? If you bought a pack for this tasting, you're in first now. And uh, if you haven't bought a pack or you're interested in the bottlings, Monday at 2 p.m. Okay? okay? So I think I just want to... Thank my colleagues across Europe here. This has been fantastic. I think the last time we were all to <laughs> Marseille. <laughs> I'm <to> get the favorite. <laughs> I, I think the last time we were all when was it, Bob? We were all together in Edinburgh. Was that last year or the year before? We went to visit the warehouse. I wasn't I was not there to be honest. I was really looking no, forward to no. doing that this year, but Two years ago, John, we met us two years ago in 2000. Two years ago, was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was the last. Yeah, and we were, we're all supposed to be together again this year. But yeah. Because of, you know, what, you know? So, okay, hopefully it will happen next year. So, what I think we should each take a few minutes doing is just telling our respective countries about anything that's coming up soon. I know nothing's happening in October, but what's coming up in November? your members if there's anything you want to share with them Marcel? yeah i'm the one who started okay <laughs> so what's up next uh yeah the t the typical tastings because we are uh, nine ambassadors and everyone has its tasting so my mm -hmm. next tasting is on um on september the 27th so feel free to come to me in hanover 
And the other thing I've planned is uh, something wild or something I did before in last year. This is a whiskey and fine art bakery. So something like macarons, so greetings to, to France, <laughs> or something like uh, whiskey and cupcakes because I have a very, very crazy pairing of uh, SMWS 33 cherry cask finished and a caramel cupcake with dark chocolate. This was very, very impressive. Fantastic, Marcel. Thank you. Any any partner bars doing anything in Germany? Yeah, um, please visit the Oscars in Hanover, but also um, have a visit in Stuttgart uh, to the Schwarz Weiss Bar with Knut Scheibelt, also a brand ambassador in uh, Germany. Very, very impressive bar. And don't forget Andreas Till in Munich uh, with the Pacific Bar, also a brand ambassador. So please, okay, if you visit. Thank you. Uh, I was in a couple of partner bars in Germany last year myself, but I hope we get back again soon. Bob? Yeah. Oh yes, lots of lots of stuff going on here in the in the Netherlands actually. Um, in Belgium, it's it's a bit more complicated at the moment, um, but we're we're getting there and uh, we'll be uh, doing some some uh, events there soon. Um, the, next Sunday, I'll be at Salentine, which is a sort of an estate, and one of our members is actually doing a tasting over there. Uh, I I'm sort of sort of almost ashamed to mention it, but but he's he's. Um, he's Anton van der Kooi and he's, he's um, doing a tasting of the 38.23, the 5.72, the 24.140, the 35.35, uh, the 72.78, and the G420. Uh, in, in a big garden under a big chestnut, chestnut tree. Okay, Bob, I, don't, I don't care about the quarantine, I'm coming over. <laughs> 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 and and I'm invited. <laughs> oh dear! So uh, that's that's going to be great. Absolutely. Okay. Great, great um, stuff. Good news. We we also have you, in October. We've also uh, have the, the 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 announcement of a new partner bar here in the Netherlands. Actually, okay. That's uh, whiskey and gin in Breda, and we'll be doing an inaugural tasting with them uh, on the 14th and on the 26th. We'll have a tasting at uh, one of our. Greatest partner bars we uh, we have in the area, which is Maltfold in Utrecht. Okay. So, um, some some stuff is going to happen gradually again, and that's uh, that's good. Great stuff, great stuff. Well, here here in the UK, uh, or here in the home islands, we have um, sensory bazaars tastings on next Monday in London and Edinburgh, and I'll be in London. It's it's a, a, a lovely meal, dinner, with some of our best whiskies, some of our vaults collection whiskies. So we haven't booked a ticket yet. There's still time. And I'll see you on Monday. Nothing much for October. We are trying to, we are trying to arrange some local partner bar tastings. But the change in the rules around COVID has kind of put a stop on that. But we hope to get back to normal fairly soon. Cyril. Hey, for my part, I will, um, there's a lot of turns here in France. You know, we, 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 we are working originally, and so we've been on the Paris, of course, and next, uh, next Wednesday, uh, sorry, yes, next Wednesday, there will be a, an outturn there. Uh, in Nantes, also in Strasbourg, Near, near near Bob in Strasbourg, uh, in Nice also, um, and we had the, in November we will be on the festival in the Lion Festival. You know the, the, the city of Lyon. Yeah. Uh, it will be a nice festival for us. Yes. Uh, and you know we, we we did we did a festival uh, last weekend. In fact, but it was a rum festival because the society has also some runs uh it was quite well yes we 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 um we had good pleasure there and uh we signed a lot of new members in fact <laughs> great stuff great stuff i forgot to mention actually now you mention rum so we are looking to try and offer our members a tasting of some of our other spirits armagnac cognac 
Jin Ra. Mm. So if anybody's interested, contact me on social media and I'll let you know all about it. We're trying to get that arranged soon, but obviously it will be virtual for the meeting. No. And Hannah. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, we have um, we are very busy in the next couple of weeks. Tomorrow we have our last tasting in in September. It were seven in the last two weeks. So tomorrow we are in in Linz, and in October hopefully we start with a whiskey festival in Graz. Then we go around to uh, Salzburg with a whiskey festival light. <laughs> Instead of the whiskey weekend, we had to have um, tasting in, in a hotel. And then we went, we, we go to Vorarlberg to, to the west, west of Austria. And at the end of October, we have our big um, anniversary party in Mariazell in our partner bar. It, uh, it's on, on two days, on 24th and 25th, and there are only a few tickets left, so be quick. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and in November okay. we, we are planning also a few tastings, and hopefully we, we can do it. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay. If, We've also just gained a new partner bar in Graz. So okay. To the Austrian members, if you're ever in Graz, stop by. It's very nice bar, very nice whiskey. Stop Die by. Beate. <laughs> it's called Die Beate. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Hannah. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think uh, we need we need to I think support our partner bars because they're a much very much extension of <laughs> you know. Oh, Sarah, what was that? <laughs> something, <laughs> to... <laughs> something. <laughs> not, not, nothing like <laughs> going out with a bang. <laughs> in, Gla in Glasgow, we have a Glasgow venue now, of course, as Bob was mentioning, but we also have a partner bar. We're going to try and arrange tastings in the future, again, when we're allowed to, called the Bon Accord. The world famous Bon Accord. Bon Accord. Yeah, Bon Accord, mm. yes. So... Alison is saying, Alison wants us to say cheers in her own language, so we'll get round to that. I'm so going start to with John. <laughs> someone, someone was also asking, when are we sending the email out with the link to the bottlings? I think that's been sent already. So if you don't have it, let us know tomorrow, okay? And for everybody who's joined in, for everybody who's offered some notes on the tastings and some comments. Thank you. The Society is nothing without its members. This is wonderful. I'm now going to go back to each of the, the member, the, the, the ambassadors in turn, to say your final words. Marcel. Yeah, it's here's in my own language. So um, I say prost. Bob. Well, in my own language as well. Um, uh, for all the leden in the Benelux, uh, tot ziens. Ik hoop jullie snel weer te zien uh, bij onze fysieke uh, uh, tastings en anders online. Proost. Oké. Okay. So, so I, I would say uh, more simply than Bob. <laughs> à la vôtre, santé. Heel duidelijk, heel duidelijk. Tjusa en Hara. Post, one last post. <laughs> and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll just say, that now that we're all going to go and personally enjoy all the whiskeys we've still got here, that we haven't all drank yet, I would, uh, there's a little uh, phrase that I like to use, and we know the effect sometimes whiskey can have on our feelings. And I would say, love makes the world go round, but whiskey makes it go round a little faster. Sandiva. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing with all of you. Cheers. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye.